Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. All right, we have a question that came in today from Brad Cordell, and Brad says, Don, I took lessons from you in 1996. Now, you might say, how does he know that so accurately? Because if he took a lesson from me, he got his, he got his diagnosis of prescription sheet with his name and the date on it. And, and so that's going back, that's going back, uh, we're 2013, that's going back like 16 to 17 years. I had somebody show up uh, about three or four months ago that actually had one dated 1986, back when I was the head pro at Pine Tree Country Club in Kennesaw, Georgia. All right, so how far is 86 is a way long back there. Now, I've been doing this since about 1982, doing a diagnosis and prescription sheets. And they're great as, as Brad's te uh, testament here is because he's got a sheet and it all his swing issues are listed, the diagnosis of what the correct setup, setup needs to be, and then a prescription on what we're going to work on in the swing. All right, he says, I played my best golf ever after your lessons, and it's pluralized. Lessons. I shot my best competitive round of 65 with two bogeys and finished with 71 next day. My question is, with the popularity of Doppler radar base launch monitors, track man in parentheses, how does your swing theory stack up? Well, I guess they stack up pretty darn good because, uh, but it depends again on somewhat what your what your theory about is about as far as ball flight and everything else goes. I do know that that uh, uh, I actually even see golf pros now using them in golf lessons. I don't think I don't ever see myself going there because again, uh, I don't mean to be uh, lighthearted or anything uh, or. or whatever in saying this but but I think myself and a uh, any player doesn't need a track man to tell us if you're hitting the ball good all I need to do is see a good setup see a good swing hear, hear the impact and look up and see the flight trajectory and ball flight pattern that we want that you want and and as far as I and, and as for me that's what I want to see now my feelings about ball flight especially with all clubs I like the ball going up at a, at a good launch angle I like hitting the driver relatively high and, and carrying it because it's like anything else. If I have a hose here and, and I have and I have a plant and I got the and my hose is 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 as far as it can go. I have no more length of hose and, and I still got a plant or two left. I'm not going to lower that hose to, to water those flowers. I'm going to raise it and get a little bit more arc. Now naturally I could lower it too much and water my feet. I could raise it too much and water me and not those. So it's a it's an optimum arc. All right. And what would be a good optimum mark? Well years ago uh, we went to, uh, uh, when DJ was first turning pro, we, uh, a company uh, invited us out to their, to their training center in, in California, and we went on the launch monitor back then, which, and, and it, DJ was hitting drives, and I always taught DJ to hit balls high into the sky. I mean, if you ever went out on tour back in the, in the, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, golfers put it up in the air. They just killed it. Nicholas hit the ball, you'd stand in like this. Phew, like that, and my feeling is, 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 is too high is no good. We know a pop up, and we know a ball that's launching out there with good, with good, pro, you know, trajectory, good penetration, holding the line, and carrying and coming down, and still hitting and, and running on on a on a fairway that is not is not overly watered and, and, and mushy. If it's got some some firmness to it, that ball's going to hit and still run. All right. If it's going up, coming down, hitting, going boom, boom, and stopping, that was too high. So once you learn what your what, what your clubs you, with your driver and, and any of your clubs what your trajectory is, then you want then you know what your trajectory is. And I don't need a machine to tell me it's exactly 16 degrees launch angle or and, and, and x amount of and x amount of rotation. But getting back to DJ going out there, he showed up and he had his driver. And this was 2003, the year before he was he was the number one ranked amateur in the world and collegiate player of the year. And 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 and. And he was using the same driver and the same ball in the test. And they said that his launch angle was between 32 and 3400. Uh, excuse me, his launch angle was between 17 and 16 and 17 degrees, maybe even up to 18 degrees. And his spin rate was, was 32 to 34. And they said the launch angle was too high and the spin rate was too much. And they had a new ball and a new driver that would lower it. Okay? Now, they were also measuring his exact yardage. There were two guys out there. They had the launch angle, the, the launch monitor was measuring it, and then he had two guys out there measuring out the roll. He came back 
and they said, okay, we got a new driver and a new ball. So they changed out his drivers and balls. They brought him five drivers to hit with X100 shafts in them or thereabouts, and he chose the one that he felt the best with, and he hit another 10 or 15 or 20 balls, whatever it was. And when the, when the tech pushed the button, and uh, there was a tech there handling the computer, and then there was the fitting, the fitting expert, who actually was uh, a former assistant pro of mine who had been hired by this company to run their, to run their, uh, to do their, be their head fitter, and working with the pros. And he worked with a lot of the top players in the in the in the world at the time who played this equipment company's equipment. And when the the tech pushed the button for the the new ball and the new driver that's supposed to load a launch angle, he said, Ah, look what we got. We lowered you to we lowered you to thirteen fourteen launch angle, exactly what we want, so we're taking you from there to there. And he said, We lowered your spin rate from thirty two thirty four hundred RPMs to twenty two twenty four. So he'd load them about a thousand. And he said, go exactly what we wanted. Excellent. And then he finally goes and he looks down at another important number, distance, and he goes, uh, 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 and, he, and, he, and he got tongue-tied. And, and so finally the uh, uh, fitter, Phil, his name was Phil, he says, okay, come on, get it out, get it out. He said, well, uh, we lost 20, 25 yards. Okay, guess that didn't work, huh? And that's what Phil said. He put his hand on his shoulder and, and he said before he could try to, justify anything. He said, it's obvious that didn't work. We're going to stay right where we're at. Now, that company, I believe to this day, is still kind of staying with those numbers. But I was actually shocked this year at the PGA show when I was with Dave Seaman. Our, uh, we were at demo day, and Dave wanted to find a new driver, and he went to one of the companies that he likes their drivers, and hit, and they had a new little little new system. It was instead of a, the, uh, you know, launch angle, launch monitor system. And, and it was a new one that's just on the market now and it's being sold and it's, it's a little bit, it's kind of midway between the most expensive one and, and, and the average ones today. And he started doing it and Dave was hitting balls and Dave launches the ball relatively high because they're teaching him to peak performance swing. That's what I told him you want. And so he's launching it up there and, 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 and when he started analyzing it uh, and he tried two or three drivers and they, and they chose the best one, the, the, the tech says, oh, you're, you're getting up there at 32, 34 and, you, and your spin rate on your spin rate, and your launch angle is about 16, 17, and that's good. So he said, I think this the driver, this driver, the second one that he hit was the best one. He said, I think that's the one you want. And I said, Whoa, 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 whoa! What happened to what happened to uh, 13, 14 launch and 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 22, 24 spin rate? He said, Well, we're finding that optimum distance. You have to have a little bit. You have to have more launch and more spin. And I said, Whoa. When did that happen? He says, yeah, we've got studies have been going there. And I think that's because in the last couple of years, a few of the companies are, are now selling balls there that, that have different covers and they're giving you different launch angles and spin rates. And they're saying, find your golf ball instead of just having one or two, that's it. They had three, four, five options. Find the ball that fits you best for what you like in the launch angle and, and how it spins and how it feels and how it lands and all that other stuff. And so they're starting to go back the other way. In fact, I think I've actually seen now a couple of companies are advertising uh, that, that they're even starting to talk about compression again, okay? And so there's your issue. So I, the launch monitors can give it to you. I see pros using it in a lesson. I don't think I need it in a lesson. To me, that's taking up a lot more time because you, you, you're finding all of that, and if there's an issue with the golf club, the, the pro, and, and, and I know a heck of a lot more about fitting than most other guys, but I'm not going to eventually try to fit everybody through a launch monitor. I'm going to send them to the guys who use the launch monitor to tell them exactly find out what your, spit, what your club head speed is, what your spin rate is, what your launch angle is, and, and all those other things to find the right shaft for you, the right length, and all that other stuff, and build you the correct clubs. I can know just by watching and listening, as well as you do, what a good shot is. You know what your good shots are and the shot you like to hit, and, and that's going to tell us. I don't need a launch monitor, but I will tell you this. You want, you want to hit the ball at a decent height that has penetration and boring, as high as you can hit it with good penetration, it's boring and it's, and it's holding its line, and, it's when it, and, and if it's anything like that, that's hitting the fairway and running out like you're hitting drivers or three woods or whatever, it's a, you want it to hit, and if the conditions are, are fairly firm fairways to hard, the ball's gonna hit and run. The only way the driver should, a driver in three woods, and even irons that you're laying up with an iron on a, on a fairway, should not hit and, and, and plug, or hit and die immediately, unless the fairways are heavily watered and soft, all right? And so you want that good trajectory and good fly pattern, and, and you can see that. That can tell it to you. And, 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 and 
you need proper height to carry it and you need enough spin so that when you're hitting in side, spin, uh, side winds, if the ball's not spinning enough, once it's losing its, 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 its projection forward and it's getting ready to fall to the earth, if it's not spinning enough to hold the line, even five, six mile an hour winds, side winds can push that ball to the right or the left. And that's how you, and that's how you see, I see too much of that on a tour. And that's uh, uh, that, that the balls go out there and they, they're flying right down in right center of the field. And all of a sudden, they, you, there's a crosswind. And, and as it's hitting its apogee and it's ending and starting to fall, pss, it goes that way. Now it's going, it's going right and into the rough and it gets killed and it's way short. So you have to have enough spin to keep the ball and hold its line. And so I think, I think that, that the, launch, the, tra the, the launch monitor stuff tells us great information. But I think it's most important for fitting you with the right clubs. And once you got fit and now you know what it looks like, all you need to know is what it looks like, what it sounds like, and what it feels, and, and watch it and see if that's what you're getting. And if you're not getting what you want, then A, something's either wrong with your swing, B, uh, you need to get your clubs checked again. All right? So hopefully this answers that question. Got a little technical on this, but, but it's... Uh, the launch monitors have taken us to another level, but I think sometimes if we get too deep into them, it can start, it can start you know getting so engrossed there and we forget about the swing and forget about the contact and forget about how we really want to hit it and get absorbed in the numbers and the next thing you know we're, we're off on tangents and looking at the wrong things. Every good, any player should know what his swing feels like, what a good hit feels like, sounds like, and what a good shot looks like. All right, and when you got that, everything's fine. Okay, well that's it for the search for today and I'll be talking with you all again soon.